Welcome back guys. This video in my 2005 Forester XT. I forgot to do something when I had the intercooler out when I was replacing it, also when I did the turbo and the exhaust and all those videos. Something I forgot to do was replace the PCV valve that's down here. And I should have done that while this was all out because this is a big pain in the butt to get out. So. I finally have the part and I'm gonna do that now. Hopefully it'll fix a little bit of a rough uh, idle that I have. So like before in my other video, if you just wanna watch the other video, of course I'll put it up there in the little card thing. But you take out the bolts on both sides. This is the aftermarket one, so this one's not attached to anything, but it's the same process. Take out the bolts on the side. You take out these, pop off the hoses so this is free. These two clamps to take off the coupler that one right there to take off the elbow. And then of course, you gotta take off your bypass valve. Once you get the inner cooler out, if you look down here, it's right next to the turbo. It is this little piece right down here. So you're gonna need, first off, to take off two hoses. So you can take off the hose that runs here that connects to your bypass valve. You can take that off to make it a little bit easier, but you can also keep it on. This one right down here, this is the first one we're gonna take off. So it has a hose clamp. So, gonna take that off. And then there's this one right here that you also have to take the hose clamp off. And these are the types of hose clamps they are. So they're kind of a little bit trickier than the regular one. You have to squeeze them in in order to unclamp it. So uh, have fun with that. So I don't know if your guys' is, is any different, but my hose down here had the basic hose clamp where it's just pinch and you open it up. The one over here, I just got off as you can see, and I put the clip right up here. Now the way that I got this off was, it's got a little hook right here. All you have to do is I put in half of my needle nose pliers and just plied upwards and it uh, it snaps off like a little snap ring. So in order to take this off now that both of those hoses are off, there is a hose on the bottom so you have to remove it from that one. So if we zoom in right below it, you can just barely make out the other hose clamp that is right, right below it. There's a hose clamp sticking out and it's the same type of hose clamp that I just took off right up here. So here it is. Now the test to see if this is actually working is the shake test. Now the ball in there is just barely moving, but I think the thing why this is not working too well, there we go. There's a little look inside there. This thing has a bunch of gunk inside. I probably could clean this but I think the reason why this isn't working properly is the ball inside isn't sealing the way it should be because of all of that oil buildup in there. So these parts are super cheap. If you do want one of these, I'll link it down below. All right, so in order to put this back in, you can see that the hose down here is a lot bigger than the hose right here that comes straight down. So you can see on the new one, and the old one too, that there's a larger diameter and a smaller diameter. So obviously the larger diameter is gonna go towards that bigger hose down there. Smaller one's gonna go up, and of course the actual valve is gonna go to the only right-hand part. The only difficult part putting this back together is getting those clamps back on. Now I have that clamp right down there, just disattached. So I'm gonna stick it through and do the best I can to get that clamp back over. All right, so I managed to get it back on, hose clamp on the right side, the clamp up here I finally managed to get on. For the life of me, I could not get the hose clamp all the way down there. Might be able to see it just hang in there. I, for the life of me, could not get that thing attached back on no matter what I did. So I'm just gonna leave that hanging. I feel like this hose up here is hard enough and the one over here is hard enough to where that's not gonna blow off or do anything bad. So yeah, fingers crossed. And another thing I forgot to do and something I just figured out recently actually is 
I test drove the car and I gave it some gas, I stepped on it on the freeway, and then I got a check engine light. And apparently, I am over boosting. And something that no one tells me, or no one told me, and is not, not really in the, the maps or anything for the access port, is there is a restrictor in this hose. Here's your turbo. There's a hose that runs along here. And then there's a little T right here. The other one runs up here. The other one runs uh, down here to this part of the turbo. So you see that it's like a T that splits here. What you're supposed to do is take this out, take the restrictor out. And the problem is with this turbo, I reuse this from my old turbo. This is the new turbo, and it has a different diameter on the inside for that restrictor. So right now, it's too much of a restriction and I'm over boosting. So I need to take this out and either buy a new one or bore out the hole so it's a little bit larger, so it's not pressurized as much and I'm not gonna get over boosting. So very simple to take this off. Just take the hose clamps off of this line. It should be here on the right-hand side, but um, if you are just replacing it and not boring it out, just take the whole Y piece out and you can go online and replace it. And here's the whole piece. There's the T fitting right there in the middle. This piece up here was right here. The short piece goes right here. The long piece goes right there on the right side. So newer ones, they'll actually have a little dot and it'll say where exactly the restrictor is. But if you look hard enough on here, you should be able to see a bulge. Looks like mine is way up here. Um, I don't see anything else, so either it's pushed all the way up here, or I don't have one at all, which wouldn't make any sense, but it should be right here. Okay, just took the fitting off, and you can still see there's a little bulge in there. I don't think I can show you guys, but if you look inside, you can see there's a little pill inside there with a hole in the middle. So I have to take that out and uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right guys, so I just got the pill out. It's right there. But if you guys are wondering how to get it out, the best way I found to do it is, here's the hose that had it in there and mine was like right up here at the tip. The easiest way I found to get it out was to get some pliers and clamp it right before the bulge of where it starts. So if you want, pinch it right here and it'll push forward a little bit. And then you get your pliers and you scoot up just a tiny bit and then squeeze it again, push it up a tiny bit, squeeze it again and it'll slowly push the pill out. And this is what the pill looks like. It's just a little piece of brass with a hole going through it. Now, because I switched over to a VF39, this hole is too small, so I need to bore this out to, I believe it's a drill bit number 57. If you wanna look that up online, it's like a 0 .04 millimeter or something like that. It's super small. So you can either pay to get a new one of these, which is the proper size, or you can go and buy the drill bits, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a machine shop, a fabrication shop. They have that size drill bit, so I'm just gonna go in there, have them drill this thing out so it's a little larger bore in the center, and I'll pay them a dollar or two for their labor, and pop this back in, and put everything back together, and I should be A-OK. -okay. So now that I have the pill back into place, bored out and uh, shouldn't be as much of a restriction anymore. I can put this back together, so I'm gonna hook that hose up. The small one is gonna go right up here, and of course the longer one with the restrictor is gonna go right here on the turbo, put the clamps back into place, and I should be good with the turbo. All right, so once the vacuum lines are back in, the PCV valve is installed and everything's beautiful. You can put the intercooler back on which is, of course, a pain in the butt if you watch my other video when I actually did take this out, so I definitely should have done this before. 
But now that I have everything back together, all the lines are hooked back up. I got the brace back here. I got my blow bypass valve all hooked up. Vacuum lines here. This is nice and tight. Everything put back together. Now you can start up your car and hopefully get rid of any sort of rough idle issues or any sort of extra burning oil that you might have. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes stuff that hasn't happened yet and unreleased content that no one else has seen. And if you haven't already, watch that video. And if you watch that video, watch that video. And if you've watched both of those videos already, make sure you subscribe down here. Yeah, watch this stuff, it's awesome. And if you've watched that, and that, and subscribe, 